what's poppin'? My name is Richie, and I'm here with my good friend, John. Please help me. Richie is holding me hostage. Uh, <clears throat> John? Okay, today, I'm going to show you guys, with the help of my good friend, John, how to make a leaderboard in Fortnite Creative, which is live updating. I have an easy version for you guys, which is super simple. And I'm also going to show you guys a version for multiple players, which also live updates. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump right into the easy version. Before we start, I want to make sure that this is not something I invented. Uh, yes, I invented the more advanced version over there, but this, uh, this, this easy version is not for me. I'm not sure who was the original founder of this one, so credit to the person who made this. Uh, but I just want to make sure that this is not invented by me, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen. So to set up the easy version, all you need is obviously the player reference device and a tracker. All right, starting in with the player reference device in here, you actually only have to change one setting and that is the register player when receiving from. So what that would do is basically just show the player on this device. So before that, the, the device is obviously empty. There's nothing to see. And if a player uses that channel, it will show that player on this device. Um, you can also change these settings over here, but that is only just visual stuff. Uh, like for example, how many emulations the player has or uh, where you want the text to show up or what position he should use on the, on the device. But that is completely optional. You don't have to do that. But very important that you change this setting and also keep in mind which channel you used here. Coming into the tracking device and this one is still very easy and very simple, uh, but it's obviously a little bit more to change. Uh, very important here on top that you have this two eliminations. It is by default, so it's not going to show up if you click this button right here. But the next thing that you have to change is the target value over here. So target value needs to be to one. I think by default that is 10. Uh, when target is reached, set that to do nothing. Otherwise, it will kind of complete the thing or like it completes the track or it actually ends the round, which we don't want. We want, don't want any of these. So do to nothing. Then show progress. You can turn that on if you want to see if it actually works, but you don't want to have that in game actually. So turn that off. Uh, same with the tracker ceremony here to that to know. And then very important here that you have the same channels on increase tracker value when receiving from and when completed to submit on channel 10. And that is all you have to do here. Uh, you don't have to set up any teams in here. Uh, obviously important that you leave all these settings here. So individual is very important here uh, and stuff like that. But you don't have to set any valid teams or any like team settings in here. It just tracks every player individually and uh, it also puts up the exact player who reaches that target value. All right, ladies and gentlemen, since you now know how the easy version works, um, we're going to take the easy version for place one over to this version. So all you have to do, same thing, just copy and paste the tracker, and you don't have to change anything about the settings that I just showed you. But now comes the hard part. How do we get a second player on the second place? If we would live in an easy world, this would obviously be very simple, and I would just copy and paste this device, and then instead of setting this target value to one, we're going to set it to zero, and then it technically would start, you know, after the first person made a kill. Uh, but this is not how this device works. And also we would still see player one, which obviously makes the first kill. We would still see him on place two, which is obviously what we don't want. We want to have the other players which have zero kills or which have like, I don't know, kills less than the first player. So how do we do this? We're going to need the tracker device still. And in this tracker device, we're going to basically set up the same settings as in the first one. But for now, we need a tracker device for each player. So that means you have to put in a valid team here. So team one, team two on this device here. Um, so we have team, two, team one and team two. They have the, both the same uh, devices over here. And basically, it stays the same for all of the settings that you have to do here. It still has to do the one counting up thing. Uh, but you don't want to have the assign on game start. That is important because after the first kill has been done, we want this device to be assigned to the other players which are not on the first place. So how are we going to do that? It is very simple. We obviously not going to assign them at the game start. And then since there is the option to assign a device to a player, we're going to have that in here. But since Fortnite Creative can obviously not read our minds and cannot do what we want to do, we have to do it ourselves. So what we also have to do is remove it if the position has changed. So I would recommend just giving them two channels here. And then what you want to do, obviously, since this is team one, right, you have to do the same channels in team two, but reverse them. So if team one is on top, we want to have team two assigned to the second place and obviously vice versa. So if team two is on top, we want to have team one assigned to the second place. So basically you just switch these around. So what you then need is a trigger device. And the cool thing about the trigger device is that you can also set trigger devices to teams. And even though we have the same channel in both of these devices, so you can see here that channel one is triggered on both of them, 
it will only activate them if that actual team activates the player. So even though they technically get activated by the same channel, only the correct team can activate each of these. So how do we set up the trigger devices? Um, as I already said, we need still the activating teams in here. So we need to set up one for, for team one and also one for team two. Um, in here, they basically get triggered by channel one. Channel one is activated by the first place. So you can see that here. Um, so this is the tracker for the first place. And if any of these players will do a first kill, this tracker sends a signal to these two devices. And then it sees, okay, team one activated this device. And then team one it sends a signal on channel three. If team two makes the, uh, the first kill, it sees, okay, team two made the first kill, we're gonna send a signal on channel four. And what that would do in the full circle is then obviously uh, either assign or remove uh, these trackers to the according players. And that's basically how you set up this whole scenario. There's some, still some problems which you wanna solve in a second. Uh, but now basically team one has to get the lead back and all they have to do is reach the tracker limit that team two set up. For, so for example, if team two has two kills already, team one needs to get at least three kills to get on top. If team one gets three kills, obviously this tracker gets activated, sends the signal, and we're gonna activate all of these here again, and then the whole scenario switches. And that is basically how it works with just two players. There's one last problem which we're gonna have with this two team setup here, and that is that the second player, as soon as he or she reaches the top kill, um, the, 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 the device will still show the, the first player then. So it will basically double down on the player here. Um, how we can counter that or how we can make sure that the other player is shown then on second place is set up mutator zone. Same thing here. You need one mutator zone for each team. So put in selected team in here and then also put in uh, effects team only selected. Uh, other than that, you can scale it up as big as you need. Also make sure that uh, weapon fire is allowed. And also make sure it's not assigned or it's not enabled from game start. In here, you have to do the same thing then. Um, set on player entering and set on player leaving. Set that to channel 2, which is the tracker of the uh, second place here. And then you have to cross uh, between these two. So enable for... Uh, so this is team, team 1. So enable on channel 4. Disable on channel 3. And you have to do the same thing for team 2. Uh, so same thing here and then just cross these. So instead of channel four, you have channel three and instead of channel uh, three, you have channel four here. And in the end, you should probably have a working second and first place uh, for two teams. Remember, this only works for two teams. If you want to have multiple teams, this is getting very complicated. It can still work. Uh, I haven't tested this out fully yet. So uh, what you have to do essentially is not use the same channels as the ones that they transmit on. You have to kind of do like, uh, multiple channels and this will take like a dozens of channels and a dozen of like reconsiderations uh, so i'd highly recommend if you have more than two teams just use the the first player thing uh, so the easy version over there and if you have two teams you can use this system which is i think is super cool it's looking very cool like having a first and second place but other than that this gets super complicated and uh, i think you just waste too much channels on the triggers if you want to have multiple uh, teams understands. So uh, with that being said, um, hopefully you could learn something today and hopefully you can create your own uh, leaderboard slash, I don't know, stat tracking system uh, in Fortnite Creative. And with that being said, hope you guys see you guys in the next video and uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. Bye.